In the previous post, I briefly mentioned that we are generating electrical power with solar panels. Uh, this is probably not of interest to many of you, but as a teaser, I'm going to show how to leverage the magic of a lava lamp to make the system smarter. Maybe that will tweak your interest just a little bit, at least if you're old enough to know what a lava lamp is. Um, first, a quick background in photovoltaic power. Uh, the most popular system today is what I installed on our garage roof this summer, a grid tie microinverter system. Uh, grid ties means we simply tie the output of the inverters directly to the utility power grid through the breaker panel. Uh, no batteries involved. Uh, we pay for electricity only if we use more than we generate for the month. And if we generate more than we use, that credit can be used in future months, usually the darker uh, winter months, for up to a year, and then it resets. Um, a microinverter system means that there is a separate DC to AC converter on each solar panel. Um, it's usually a little more expensive than the older one big inverter per system setup but microinverters are more efficient uh, as they can tune their power output to each panel and uh, which makes a big difference if you have any shadows cast on your panels throughout the day. The other advantage is that microinverters are uh, pretty easy to install. Um, so let me take you up to the roof and I'll show you that. There was a decision on whether to install the solar on a classic sloped roof which uses fairly inexpensive mounting hardware or a flat roof, which is a little more expensive but pretty easy to do. There's these recycled plastic bins from a company in Germany that you just put three cinder blocks in each and that makes for a very wind tolerant system. Doesn't penetrate the roofs, no leaks. So if you look down here you'll be able to see the microinverter. There's one per panel. Uh, this is the M15 from a company called Enphase. And they just daisy chain together with these cables. Now in my case I have 18 panels, 250 watts each for um, a four and a half kilowatt system. They daisy chain together in two separate systems that come together in this box and send two 120 volt 20 amp lines down to the circuit breaker. Uh, now the cost of this after uh, tax incentives uh, really uh, quite affordable these days, much more than it used to be. It's about $2 per watt, $1.50 if you install it yourself. Um, so that'll make for a payback of um, probably less than 10 years at the current electrical rates, uh, less if the rates go up, which they probably will. Um, and so after 20, the 20 or 25 year lifespan of the system, you'll save yourself um, twenty, thirty thousand dollars. So uh, let's go look in the garage where there's a little interface that these guys talk to uh, to report the health, how they're doing, and how much gen power they're generating. So after the solar panel installation was done, the power company came out and swapped their older meter out for one of these newer uh, net meter meters, which is basically two meters in one. One that measures total cumulative power. Um, that we generated uh, versus total cumulative power that we've used. So the 1054 is what we've used since we've installed it and the 1174 is what we've uh, generated. So, so far over the last four months we have a net positive of, of 80 watts, um, which I'm sure we'll use come December and January. I'm show off my magnet collection. I love magnets. More importantly, in here you can see where the solar system ties into the grid through each of these circuit breakers. Right next to it you can see the little box that Envoy has that takes information from the solar panels that's sent via uh, the power line, so this just plugs into a regular outlet. And this box decodes that power line encoded data and monitors the output and health of each of the 18 solar panels. So right now, late in the day, we're generating 165 watts. That'll get up to about 4 uh, kilowatts on a sunny summer day. So it sends that data over Ethernet, in my case, or wireless in other cases, and um, which then we tap via Mr. House. And well, the Envoy that. box in the garage sends the power generated data up to the Envoy cloud, and then they give us a nice web interface here to see and review how much power we generated. 
As you can see, I can click on different days, and um, on nice sunny days, we get a nice uh, bell-shaped curve of, of power generated. And on cloudy days, you can see when the clouds come and go, and on snowy days, you don't get much power at all. So power generated um, monitoring that's real easy. The problem is when you want to look at the power you've used, those power meter uh, sensors, they don't detect the direction of the power you're using. So that watt vision sensor gets all confused uh, during the day. For example, you can see we're generating uh, power at night. And this all makes sense. We wake up and we turn computers on. That makes sense. But then when the sun comes up and our panels start generating power, it looks like we're generating two and a half kilowatts of power like we're consuming two and a half kilowatts of power that's how much we're generating right at this point is when the power switches from a uh, net used to a net uh, generated but the watt vision doesn't know that he's not clever enough I don't know of any power meters that are clever enough to sense the direction of the power here comes the la lava lamp to the rescue so the idea is to, throughout the day when we're generating power, turn the lava lamp on for 10 seconds. Uh, I'll do it manually here. Um, test power direction. So that's going to turn on the lava lamp for 10 seconds. And what I'll be able to measure uh, in the watt vision, it's over here by Helen's workstation because she loves lava lamps. Um, so what I'll look at uh, before and after that test is how much power uh, difference there was. So if we're using power, if like now, we would see, uh, we would be using more power, I would see a blip going up for when the lava lamp is on. If we're generating power, I would see a blip going down, indicating that we have a net positive gain. Um, so that's the lava lamp hack, and we... With all that together, in, um, you can see that in these X Ivy plots. So here's our solar power being generated today. It's kind of a cloudy day, so it kinda, um, you'll see variance in that. And here's what the power meter says, the watt vision. And you'll see that that meter and the um, generated power look just about the same. So this is misleading. Uh, this plot shows when we take the Turning power direction. The uh, and then when we take the power direction into account, um, this is the actual power used. And we aggregate all that data on this really nice website called uh, pvoutput.org. And what you can see here is it tallies in uh, red how much power we're using and in green how much power we generated. So these uh, net generated power for today was... 14 kilowatts, and so far the net consumed was um, about 7 kilowatts. And um, you can look at previous days. One of the useful things you can do at this PV output site is compare your output with neighbors nearby solar installations. Um, this way you can uh, detect if well, your system or their system is malfunctioning. So here I picked a nearby neighbor and you can see this is normalized data so independent of the size of the installation those plots should line up and they do uh, fairly well. You can see when the clouds come in we both go down and when it's sunny it looks like um, I have a little bit more efficient system than they do but otherwise I'd say it's pretty good. So uh, that's it. Solar power maybe coming to a roof near you.